Other factors could be that lubrication, blue, 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 blue. Other factors could be that uh, the lubrication in your what? Other factors could include lubrication. Can't speak today, come on. Other factors could be lubrication, the synthetic or but other factors could be lubrication. I can't say it, I can't say lubrication. So today, nine crucial things one must know if you're a watch owner and signs to look out for that your watch needs to be serviced before it's too late. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about digital quartz, uh, manual wind automatics, this applies to all watches. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and get into it. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. I'll start with a quick wristwatch check. Wearing the mighty flighty on the NDC strap. There you go. Haven't worn it in a while, and the magic has returned. So number nine, sounds obvious, but is your watch keeping good time? Now, if it is behaving erratically, uh, this is the first uh, telltale sign. So let's look at COSC, for example, which is, if I remember correctly, uh, that's why I don't remember correctly, that's why I'm looking at the notes, uh, is up to, Okay, four seconds slow or six seconds fast, that's within COSC. I think Rolex is even tighter than that. I think plus or minus two seconds. Now, if it's going really, really super duper fast, it might be magnetized and go back to a very early rudimentary, painfully embarrassing video where I showed uh, you uh, a demagnetizer. You can buy them cheapest chips off Amazon. There'll be one in the Amazon store link down below, but they work like a charm. So when you go to the airport and you have to uh, put your bag to be scanned and you know the, the x-ray machine, that can magnetize it. You see a lot of, of watches going to watchmakers during the holiday season, typically in the summer, because more people travel as a result. Another factor could be lubrication. Uh, the synthetic oils do dry up, so that needs to be uh, added every so often. We'll get into that, uh, more into that in just a moment. Keep in mind, there are on average about 100 moving parts in your typical uh, average automatic watch. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of variables. Okay, number eight, are all the other parts of the watch functioning? correctly so things like chronographs are the sub registers you know moving correctly is it zeroing correctly but not just mechanically look at bezels and things is it getting too tight or too loose possibly the threading of the crown if it's a threaded crown if it's a screw down i mean very very important indeed because you know if that's compromised phew, you're in a world of trouble as we'll see in a moment with my tudor i'll give you a personal example of something non-mechanical uh, I owned a Navi timer years ago, donkeys years ago, that the bezel was getting increasingly tougher to turn. You know, the iconic slide rule bezel. Well, it turns out that a piece of cashmere had snagged off an old sweater or jumper, as we say back home, and had got caught in the bezel and it was just getting lodged in there. And the more you turned it, the more, <laughs> the more it got caught up in there. Uh, of course, I had to get a watchmaker to take it out before I sold it. Uh, I, bought a different Navi timer. And that's something you, you, you want to ask when you buy a watch. Has it been serviced? You, want, you don't want to buy a watch and then have to spend a hidden extra six hundred thousand dollars you know, and guys, I've done videos in the past where I've bought chronographs and it actually it was more expensive to fix an old vintage watch than it was uh, to, to service it than it was the actual cost of the watch. So beware of hidden costs. Anyway, that's going into another point which uh, we'll get to in just a moment. Number seven, uh, and this is quite a, a hotly debated uh, topic between watchmakers, are more complicated watches, do they need to be serviced more regularly? Personally, I like to err on the side of caution. Think about it like this. With a more complicated watch, there's more moving parts, there's more things that need to be lubricated, there's more points of friction, there's more contact surfaces between different components, and therefore 
that heightens the need for a servicing. The more high-end something is, the parts tend to be smaller, more delicate, more susceptible to breaking. Take a perpetual calendar, super complicated, smaller moving parts, therefore more delicate, more chance of things going wrong. The more variables, the simpler the watch, the tendency it to run more reliably. But of course, you know, nothing is set in stone. Anything can, can muck up, you know, that's, kind of the thinking behind the Explorer, you know, no date. The, the, the simpler the watch, the less chance of things going wrong. Another thing is the gasket. A watch can still function perfectly well, but the gaskets over time, they dry up, they crack, and they compromise the uh, water resistance of the watch. So gaskets uh, are kind of a bit like oil, that they only have a certain um, shelf life. The only way to know is to send it to a watchmaker to have a checkup, and I urge you to do that. We'll discuss timing and all of that in just a moment. Number six, signs that your watch has been compromised by water. As you guys know, I wear the hell out of my dive watches. I love them because I wear them during cardio. In the summertime, they get covered in sweat. I jump in the shower, I give it a rinse off. If I'm gonna go to a pool or the ocean, I make sure I rinse it off. But yeah, I wear them, mainly because of the water resistance uh, and also the dive time bezel for timing cardio, biking, jogging, all the rest of it. I noticed there was rust on the dial and it was becoming increasingly worse the more I used it and that was a telltale sign. Now, I knew it was serviced just before I bought it, but it was coming up to that time, so I sent it in to my good friend Moyer. Sometimes I use Saltzman's, but I used Moyer's this time because I had to send in something else to be valued at the same time, so it's just more convenient for me. They have an independent watchmaker, really great job, and I specified specifically what I wanted uh, done, and we'll get into that. Also, this is very important if you don't want to get um, scammed and uh, lose a whole bunch of money. You have to have a watchmaker you trust and is gonna carry out the work you want. And it's no wonder that moisture is the number one cause of uh, uh, damage in a watch. Typically, most watchmakers, will use, it's either that or shock, you know, because for obvious reasons. Okay, number five. Now this sounds a bit strange, but trust me, it worked for me. Is there anything that sounds off? Anything rattling inside? Is the rotor behaving strangely if it's an automatic? I once had a bracelet malfunction. One of the links, and I think um, a spring bar, and one of the um, a hinges on the clasp had rusted, and I couldn't see it, but you could hear it, was, and it felt strange. I didn't see it coming, I just kind of ignored it, but then one day, fell apart in my hand. Had it been on my wrist, I would have lost it in the street. Uh, and actually, um, this was an expensive watch as well. Anything behaving or sounding different, bear that in mind. Guys, and if you, if you wear a diver when you're uh, doing cardio, buy yourself a very affordable, you know, cheap as chips, military style NATO strap, like the ones at Risk County Watch Club, they're water resistant, they attach at both ends. So if you do have spring bar, malfunction, it's still gonna be attached to you, trust me. Uh, you will thank me. So yeah, they're perfect for, um, I mean, that's why, they, it's a military invention. Of course, it's gonna be great for cardio and you know, when you're really beating the hell out of your watch. Okay, number four, and this is a frequently asked question. Does climate and the amount of wear and other conditions factor into the over Whole frequency uh, or the amount of servicing rather and absolutely so uh, if you dive regularly if you're using your watch in uh, jogging like like I was explaining earlier uh, swimming whatever five year minimum because those gaskets will wear out and the chlorine or salt water can certainly erode it and yeah you do not want water getting in because it can look absolutely fine I was very lucky with my Submariner. I can only imagine the cost of the full servicing required to you know, take each component, clean it, put it back together or replace components. The more you wear a watch, the more uh, wear and tear on the, uh, the components inside the movement, obviously. Then you're gonna have more shocks on the watch. Again, more exposure to possibly magnetic fields. Uh, all that stuff. So yeah, um, definitely, definitely, absolutely. Now, in terms of the type of climate, again, you know, temperatures, um, sudden temperature changes, um, humidity, this kind of thing um, does affect the watch as well. So for example, we, t we spoke of the, the oils used for lubrication earlier, but 
they will evaporate over time. And what happens is the watch will still carry on working perfectly normally. In fact, you won't notice any difference, but uh, without lubrication, those components will start rubbing on each other. And over time, because if you imagine a watch at 28,800 vibrations an hour, you know, every single day, that metal will eventually wear off and there'll be a tiny little bits of debris and it will build up inside the watch and then that will get into other parts of the watch and yeah then <laughs> you can imagine where that's going and then ultimately the shearing off you know of the pivots for example eventually they'll snap and then it will stop working completely so i would advise being proactive okay number three this is absolutely crucial and that is choose your watchmaker carefully. I went with Moya because I've worked with them in the, in the past. I know their type of service. What is crucial here is I specified, I didn't want any polishing. I didn't want anything. I sent the watch in. I said, you know, tell me what the damage is, what's going on inside the watch and report back. And then we'll take it from there. They did precisely that. Thank God the gaskets had still protected the insides of the watch. So it wasn't compromised. So the rust was here between Cyclops and the very periphery of the dial. Apparently there was water did get inside. They've placed new seals inside and tested it. Yeah, thankfully it stopped the, the, the this case design had not been compromised. Uh, good old Oyster. I had it pressure tested to 200 meters, new gaskets, all the rest of it to make sure like it says on the dial. So I don't have to th worry about it for another five years or whatever it is, right? A good watch maker will listen to your directions and your requirements and what you specified, right? There's a reason I don't want my watch polished, you know? Sometimes, and this is the problem with vintage pieces, uh, if it's a discontinued movement that the parts are not manufactured, supplies of those parts run out and then inevitably that will reflect on the price of your service. Be careful if you do go with that brand, let's say, um, Actually, I'm not going to name names, but let's say brand X, you bought from brand X, you sent it in, I don't know, 10 years later or, you know, for a service and they do a full service. They don't even consult you. They don't even, you know, and then you end up paying the full price. All you wanted really was, I don't know, a battery change or uh, the, the, the bezel had cracked on the diver and you wanted that replaced. They, you know, they'll give you the works and then they'll charge you for the full service when you didn't need it. You know, you want a, a watchmaker that's transparent, that's going to be there for you, um, is accountable and, and is going to work with you. I have a friend who recently serviced the Patek and it ended up costing $3,000. So if you, <laughs> another reason why I don't particularly want to own watches of that caliber um, level, right? So always keep it in mind, especially when buying a watch. If you're spending 10 grand, Imagine the, the, the cost is always relative. Number two, is the uh, repair or service covered by the warranty of whatever brand or watch we're talking about? I have written down here that Cartier uh, is now offering eight years international warranty from the time you purchase it, as is JLC. Rolex, I think, is about seven. Breitling is five. Um, so, for example, you might as well send it in, you know, um, I'll have a checkup before it runs out. So I'll give you another example. I recently, if you recall, before Christmas uh, last year, I bought a Dan Henry 1972. The watch was keeping time. Everything was fine, except for it wasn't zeroing correctly on one of the sub dials. It was still under warranty. I sent it in. Dan Henry did a fantastic job. They looked after me a couple of weeks. It was back and it was fixed. Um, as it should have been. Uh, you know, I've discussed all of this. It's just a good example of a brand looking after their customer, but it's worthy to point out because, you know, you don't want to pay for a service with an independent and it's already covered, you know? So see if your warranty is still valid. Okay, so number one, what period of time would I recommend to regularly service your watches, even if there are no noticeable um, changes in performance, no big accuracy issues, no strange noises, all of that stuff. I would say between uh, four to seven years. Shorter time if you're more active with it and if it's something that goes in the ocean and the swimming pool more. Longer if it's something that just, you know, sits in the collect collection box or 
you know, is well looked after and cleaned and, you know, pampered, a safe queen, so to speak, then yeah, longer. And I'm sure there's lots more. Do help down below in the comments, your little bits of advice, observations, stories, uh, especially horror stories of servicing your experience with brands, brands you would recommend that um, do look after their customers and brands that don't. Share all of that good stuff in the comments. I love hearing your feedback. Please don't forget to like this video. Very important indeed. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will catch you in the next one. Onwards and upwards. Ciao.